I operate with the Spirit of God. If Jesus says it, if Jesus lived it, if Jesus did it, who are you and I to disobey? Who are you and I to say, well, uh, you know what, the Holy Spirit's not that great. Don't actually need Him that much. Let's align ourselves accurately. Point five, we need to operate in the revelation of all truth. John 4, 14 verse 26 um, says that the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Right, sorry, that's John 16. John 14 verse 26 says that the Holy Spirit will teach you everything that I've commanded you and remind you of everything. Right, remind you of everything that I've said. Okay, so John 16, He will teach you all truth. We need to operate from that place. Operate as a living stone. Right, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. We need to be built in as living stones. Um, to get more teaching on this living stone, our pastor, Pastor Cornelius van Eningen, has been preaching for quite a while on living stones. Please get those CDs. Please get that information. I'm not going to spend too much time on it now. And we need to start operating from the holy place. That's point seven. We need to start operating from the holy place. Right, Hebrews 4 verse 16 says that we can approach the throne of grace with confidence. All right? You with me? You can approach the throne of grace with confidence. You, no long, you don't have to fear. You don't have to fear of, of dying. Right? Those that try to, try to tread or climb Mount Sinai, apparently 3,000, if I'm correct, apparently 3,000 of them died there at Mount Sinai. You don't have to fear that. You can approach the throne of grace with confidence because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. Right? And Ephesians 2 verse 6 that says that you are seated in the heavenly realms at the right hand of the throne of God. What does that mean? Who is at the right hand of the throne of God? Except for Dingle on the stage here. Right? Who is at the right hand of the throne of God? Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the throne of God. The right hand man. The one who goes and ushers out the will of the king. What does the scripture say? You are seated at the right hand of the throne of God. In Jesus Christ, you are seated in heavenly places. You have heavenly opportunities. But if you continuously have an earthly mindset, you will never access those heavenly opportunities. You will never live as if you have hope. You will never live as if you actually can have a better future. Now Satan wants to bind you and blind you and lie to you and steal from you. So that you will not access this knowledge. That you will not access this freedom of you can actually come to the throne of grace with confidence. You are actually sitting at the right hand of the throne of God in Jesus Christ. What is that saying again? You have the authority of Jesus Christ to operate on this earth. Father God is saying, I link you with the person who's sitting at my right hand. You have the authority that I have given him. Now go and operate. Go and operate under the guidance of the Spirit. If you do not choose that, you will never break through. If you do not understand that, you will never break through. You will always live as a limited Christian. You will always limit yourself. And yet though you'll be satisfied with your limitations. Right? Operate from the holy place. Just um, briefly, I'm just checking the time over there. Um, in the book of Revelations, um, John, it says that John was caught up on the Lord's day. And he, he said, I heard a sound, a sound like a trumpet. And immediately I was in the spirit. There's a difference between a spirit dimension and a flesh dimension. Right? You need to learn how to operate from a spirit dimension. If you want to break through, right? The spirit carries more authority than the fleshly dimension. You see in the natural and for you, your natural mind says, I cannot, I cannot, they cannot. I will never become, I will never be able to. You see in the natural, but what does God see in the supernatural, in the spirit? There's something there that we need to access. And while John is in the spirit, he sees Jesus walking amongst the lampstands. Now, these lampstands represent the church, all right? Seven lampstands, they represent the church. And 
when from, from this point onwards in the book of Revelations, Jesus gives the letters to the seven churches. All right? And what is he busy saying? He's saying, you guys are so natural-minded. This is wrong with you. That's wrong with you. Okay, this one's quite good. This, this area of your life is good. That area of your life is okay. But this is fleshly. This is inaccurate. This is that and that. That's the church in the natural dimension. Is there's flaws. There's mistakes. But then Jesus says to him in, I think, Revelations 4, he says, come up here. I mean, what do you mean by come up here? I'm already in the spirit. I'm already out of the flesh. You were in the spirit to be able to see prophetically what was wrong. But now I'm going to reveal to you the perfect state of the church. And he reveals to them the church that is operating around the throne of God. Everything revolves around the throne of God. Come on, church. Everything is revolving around the throne of God. God is commanding and people are going. Angels are going. People are worshiping. It's no longer in this natural dimension, but it operates from the holy place. You need to align your life to be able to operate from the holy place. You need to align your life and know that you are seated in heavenly places, that you have the authority of Christ to operate. And you need to come with confidence before the throne of grace. You need to know that you rightfully have that position if you are in Jesus Christ and if you have a living relationship with the King of Kings. If you do not have that, you are not yet allowed to enter the kingdom. And I pray and I hope that for all of us here tonight, we will make that commitment to know the King of Kings. You with me? So that was the introduction. The brief introduction. You ready for the Word of God? Amen. Just turn to the person behind you and ask them, are you, do you have an expectation yet? All right, so we just discussed those seven points that we need that are vital for breakthrough. And now we're going to look at what Pastor Cornelius spoke on concerning last, last Sunday evening, concerning the oil, all right, the oil of God. All right, and page with me to 2 Kings 4. Page with me to 2 Kings 4. And we're going to open this up. Amen. Are you excited for the Word of God? You're excited about the Word of God. Yes. All right. The Word with the Spirit is vital for us for, for breakthrough, permanent breakthrough. All right, I'm going to read from verse 1. The wife of, of a, a wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elijah, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and, now, um, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me what you have in your house. Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Except a little oil. Elisha said, Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Um, don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and, and your sons. Pour, in, pour the oil into the jars, as, and as each is filled, put it in one side. But she left, them, she left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought out the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left and the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts and you and your sons can live on what is left. All right, let's take this point by point. The first point that Pastor Cornelius spoke about last weekend is the oil is the source of your miracle. All right? There's a saying that successful people start where they are with what they have. So what is it that you have? What is it that, that you have? This oil also represents the Word of God. How faithful are you being with the Word of God? Do you... If, if, if the Holy Spirit has to zoom into your hard drive of church sermons to see the contents that is still there, how full is your hard drive? What is your capacity? How faithful are you being with the Word of God? Do you only have a little? Or are you overflowing? 
But even if you have a little, you can start with that little that you have and you can dig in for breakthrough. You with me? The oil is a source of your miracle. What was the source of a miracle in this scripture? The oil, the anointing, the word of God. So the prophet speaks. There's a proceeding word that goes from his mouth and says, what do you have? Take what you have and go and pour it in other jars. All right. So where you are with what you have, allow the word um, that you have, that you receive to work within you. Be faithful with what you receive. Because this word that you receive in this house, this word that you're receiving every single Sunday, if you are not just a listener of the word, if you are a doer of the word, this will produce miracles within you. This will produce the change that you need. This will produce the change that you desire. Come on, church. This is the word that will raise your standard, that will help you to live by a higher standard. Yes. Point two, the oil is already in the house. So what are you? Are you a church hopper? A TBN shopper? Why must you go from shop to shop, hijacking little bits of oil? And find that when you put it all together, it skiffs and moves around to different levels. And ooh, how am I supposed to balance out all this different kind of oil? The oil is already in the house. What you need to be is you need to be built into the house to receive the oil accurately. If you are not built in, you are a church hopper, you're a TBN shopper, whatever you want to call yourself. But you will get oil from different places and you might leak out that oil right you might not be able to carry that oil accurately because you are one you are man alone you saw that she gathered the vessels into one house she didn't leave one over here outside leave the next outside leave that one by that person she gathered the oil into one house and poured out the oil in that house because the miracle was within the house. The miracle was within the word that is in the house. So stop shoplifting. Get built into the house of God. Become accurate so that you can help contain because if all the vessels are filled, if all the vessels are open and willing Man, this house will overflow with the oil of God. This house will overflow with breakthrough. Right? And what is not enough for what you cannot contain, the person next to you can contain. We can help one another. There's anointing in the house. There's a corporate anointing in the house. Corporate anointing for breakthrough in the house. But you must be built in as an accurate living stone. Point three, the oil increases and multiplies by the preceding word of God. So this prophet says, go and do as I say. That is the preceding, the, the revelation word that God spoke out. What happens? She does. She's obedient to the prophetic word. And what happens? This oil multiplies and multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. I want to just refer to John 4. It's a sermon that we spoke about quite a while back. But Jesus is speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well. And he says, she, well, he basically asked the lady, please give me a drink of water. And now they start making little talk. And um, he says to her, if you knew who it was that was asking you, you would ask me for a drink of water. All right? And he says something profound. He says, and this water that I give you, this drink, this one cup that I give you will become like a well, a well of water within you, of living water within you. The very next chapter goes and speaks and it says that this well will become streams of living water. So one drink will satisfy you, but that, that drink is, is, is busy active in you. It's busy, it's living, and it's active, and it's producing, and it's multiplying, it's growing. The preceding word of God will multiply the breakthroughs, will multiply the areas of change. It will not just change one facet of your life, it's going to change and influence every facet of your life. That is the living and enduring word of Jesus Christ. 
It doesn't just touch one facet of your life. And you know what happens with this? It becomes a well. For who? For your family and for your town. For your family. It becomes a stream of living water. For who? For your city. You become a source. You become a source of the living word for other people to come and drink. And your river will not run dry. Your well will never run dry. Because you have the living word multiplying, multiplying, active, living and active within you. Amen. And we see further, um, if you know the history of this town, um, back in the book of Genesis, one lady was raped by the men of that town. And um, all the men of that town were put to death because of their act. Now, this woman was a bit of a loose goose, if I can put it that way. She was commonly known amongst the men of that city. Right? Now, because of one woman getting a revelation of who Jesus Christ is, getting the prophetic word, the, the word of revelation in her life, one woman goes and spreads the word of God to the city, and the Bible says that all the men of the city come to know Jesus Christ, and they come and say later, we do not just know him because of your testimony, we know him now in person. And they changed. They came to know the living word. Because of one woman, because of one drink, because of one preceding word, it changed not only one woman's life, it changed the lives of all the men of the city. So if that influenced all the men of the city, obviously it went to their wives and to their children. And beyond that, it didn't just change the city, it changed the history of that place. You may have a rubbish history. You may have a rubbish past. But when you get that living and active word within you, you change. God no longer considers your past anything. You live free from your past. You come under the bloodline of Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a slave to a bloodline curse. You come under the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Amen? So we're busy still speaking about spirit dynamics for breakthrough. Are you with me? Yeah. Point four. The oil must fill up every vessel in the house. Get the vessels in the house. Don't be some loose shoplifter. Get built into a house. And the, and the word, the oil must fill up. Each of you that are here are, have a personal responsibility to be filled up with the word of God. Each of you that are here have a responsibility to have a living and active relationship with Jesus Christ. That is what this house is about. That is what this church is about. That is the heart of this church. You need to have as individuals a living relationship with Jesus Christ. Not just knowing of Him. But beyond your personal responsibility, there's a corporate responsibility. We need to make sure, we need to be our brother's keepers. We need to make sure that the person next to me is growing. Hey, I saw you sin today. Why you do that? It's what the Word of God says. If you see someone sin, you that have seen him must go and correct him. This is the house of God. There are rules. There is order in the house of God. And the sons of the house are supposed to operate accordingly to that. There's a corporate purpose for this house. Therefore, we need to be one in heart, one in mind, one in spirit. Amen. Amen. And for us to be one in heart, one in mind, one in spirit, Galatians 5 says, Submit unto one another as if unto Christ. But you're not my leader. What attitude is that? That's a lawless, rebellious attitude. The Word of God says that submit unto one another as if unto Christ. We're supposed to be doing it. We're supposed to keep one another accountable. Make sure, hey, my brother, my sister, I see you running dry. Come on, let's help you. Let's help you. You know, there's a peer pressure out there in the world. But we can create a peer pressure in the church that will cause everyone in this house to be full, to break through. Amen. There's an anointing. It's called the anointing, right? 